Jerry Tarkanian, one of the greatest to ever coach the game of basketball at any level, NBA, college, pro, uh, and, and anywhere in the globe, in my mind, you're one of the finest coaches the game has ever had. Jerry, uh, let, let, let's let's go back to the to the, the very origin of, of Tarkanians. Tarkanians an Armenian name. Tell me a little bit about your mom and dad and and, and 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 as you grew up under them. Well, my father and mother both came from the old country, and uh, they, they were immigrants. So we, uh, my father settled in, in Euclid, Ohio, and my mother came and joined him after a few years. Um, and then I was born in uh, I was born in Euclid, Ohio, and then my family moved to Pasadena, California when I was a freshman in high school. Mm -hmm. and, and what were the early years, say 10 to, to, to 16, what were the early years for Jerry Tarkanian like? Uh, were, were those the years you spent in, in uh, Pasadena or was it split between Pasadena and Euclid? It was probably split. Uh -huh. we, uh, I, I was a sophomore, I was a freshman in high school when we moved to Pasadena and I imagine that about 13 years old. Yeah. And when did when did you take up your first basketball and become interested in the game of basketball, Jerry? Well, I was always interested in basketball. And, you know, just when in Euclid we played every every day. We played outdoors, and and I was brought up with sports. And, and my first love was really basketball. Mm -hmm. What other sports did you play, Jerry, early on other than basketball? Well, I played football until I was basically a freshman when we moved out here. Mm -hmm. I gave up football. What a first! What attracted you to to, to basketball? You know, I mean, probably the fact that we could practice, play it all year round, mm -hmm. play it uh, outdoors. We, we we were playing basketball practically every day. Mm -hmm. How, how good a player were you? That wasn't a real good player. That's my grandson right there. What's going on? Hey, how you doing, George Rabbit? I'm Jerry. Good to, good to see you. Yeah, the other Jerry. That's <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so how good a player were, were you as a youngster growing up? I wasn't real good, but I played all the time. Mm -hmm. I, uh, Played high school, junior college, and in Fresno State. I I, I started uh, in. I, I had a good junior college career, and then I uh, went to Fresno State, and I, I didn't play a lot until I was a senior, and then then I got to play quite a bit, and I started. And actually, I was a captain uh, my senior year. What positions did you play, Jerry? Point guard. Oh wow! So, so oh, that's the where last you're... of the of the point guard is. Of the true point guards. True point guard. Mm -hmm. Jerry, when you were growing up playing basketball on Euclid and Pasadena and Fresno State, who who were your role basketball role models? Well, you know, uh, Pete Newell and John Wood were the two guys that were the dominant coaches, but. When I started coaching, and in um, actually I was a Pete Newell guy, basically more than anything. I just admired the way he coached. <laughs> I thought he was the only coach who won national championships and won what our great players. Mm -hmm. Jerry, uh, what was your first head coaching job? It was a high school in Fresno, San Joaquin Memorial, mm -hmm. and I had a Great job. I mean, I love the job. I, I love the kids. I had a great time. I wasn't making any money. Mm -hmm. I was married and had, had my first child. And uh, we had all cheese and wine with you. <laughs> we had all good, but it, it, I wasn't getting paid very much. Mm -hmm. Were you teaching class and coaching? Yeah. What, what classes were you teaching? California history. Um, I had basically a regular class load. 
Um, I just love the school. The school is a great school and they have great kids. And I, I just loved it. I, you know, I loved Who was your best player that you had there? It's at Wakee Memorial. Uh, I don't know if I had any. You didn't, didn't have the great, great ones, just a really good, yeah. good, solid kids. Jerry, you know, you had a lot of success in your career coaching the junior college uh, players. What was it about that attracted you to, to the junior college players? Well, they were the easiest ones to get. Uh -huh. You know, I wasn't going to go against UCLA and USC and get a lot of freshman kids. Mm -hmm. And I had to be, uh, I went to junior college myself, and um, and it, uh, and it, when I first started coaching, uh, you know, I was Long Beach State was uh, was primarily a, uh, we were we we were a state college, but a majority of our students were junior college kids. Mm -hmm. And what was your first, uh, how did you transition out of San Joaquin? And what was your next coaching job after that, Jerry? Uh, I went to Redlands High School, which was a great move on my part. It was a, the best high school I'd ever been around to this day. I mean, I'd love to go back there. I've been back there for a lot of functions. And I love Redlands High School. It was right, right outside of Riverside, California. Mm -hmm. It was a great school. Great school. I was really, in, really infatuated with Redlands High School because they were dominant football. Mm -hmm. And they, they had a reputation as one of the top football programs in, in Southern California. And they would get to the playoffs every year and, and go away to the playoffs. It, it survived them. So when I went there, I really wanted them to find out why they were winning in football. It was a small school in the league. It, it had a small enrollment in the league. It was uh, probably the wealthiest school in the league. And, um, but they had great support for the community. And it translated into the football team where those guys played above their heads every game. They want that emotion and passion and loyalty and all these things that we try to teach ourselves. And how, how did you transfer that energy from football and the success of football at Redmond's over into your basketball program? Well, I've always been a football fan, so I got real close with the football coach. I've always had a good relationship with football coaches. And I went with him. One day I asked him, I said, Frank, I said, I, I want to see what you guys are doing. I don't understand how you guys are winning all the time. Because every Friday morning they have a football breakfast. And we go to breakfast, the football coach would be there, and the visiting coach would be there. Visiting coach would get up and talk about their players, and they had all these big guys. And, and uh, our, our coach would get up and talk about the Redlands kids, and I used to see those kids all the time on campus. God, they were <laughs> nice looking guys. They were, yeah. they were they were nice guys. They they, they were it was the wealthiest school in the league, and and, uh, and they were winning. And the visiting coach would get up and talk about how he had this defensive end that weighed two hundred twenty pounds and ran a 10 flat hundred or something. And I said, God, I don't know how our guys are going to be able to play against them. And the game is starting, they can't make the first down. <laughs> it was it was just amazing. Uh, we used to play our football games at the University of Redmond Stadium. Mm -hmm. I think it seated like about 5,000. And uh, I remember going to those football games. I, I didn't miss a game. And the, the bus would pull up to, uh, to the football stadium. And then, they, then it would come out of the football field. And the crowd was always packed. And it was, yeah, the football games were, were really a thrill to be at. Mm -hmm. 
And I, I that or my football, my coaching experience from them. That's where I got the idea where I had no talking in our locker room or on the team bus. And I had, uh, we did quite a few things similar to what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And so tell us about Redlands High School basketball under Jerry Tuckin. Well, my second year we won the championship. Wow. Well, I had, I had a great player, Danny Walters, who went to Cal Berkeley. Mm -hmm. He was a great, great player. Actually, I named my son after him. Mm -hmm. Danny was my first son. Mm -hmm. Danny was one of my favorite, he's still one of my favorite people. Mm -hmm. And from Redlands, what was your next stop, Jerry? Riverside Junior College. Mm -hmm. uh, Riverside was adjacent to Redlands. And uh, my college roommate at Fresno State was a quarterback, and he lived, he coached football. He lived in Corona, which is on the other side of Redlands. And uh, uh, in a, um, Lois and I were involved in their wedding. They were involved in ours. We were very, very close. We would meet every Sunday and go to Catholic Church and uh, have breakfast in Riverside. And we'd drive around Riverside afterwards and I said, the Lowell's went back. I said, you know what would be great if I could ever get this job here? I said, we could buy a home and settle down. You know, we, uh, we got a home in, in Riverside, in Redlands, which was a nice home, but we only paid seventy five hundred dollars for the home. Wow! Got on the GI Bill. It was a two bedroom, but it was it was a, it was such a great community. I actually accepted the job, and I went home. My mother was ill in Pasadena. My brother went to University of Redlands, mm -hmm. and my brother and my and was at my mother's house when I went there. And I told him I got the Riverside job, and he said, God, he said, Jerry, you're crazy. So you're not going to be able to win there. They, they had him one there, and I forget how many years, like 12 years. And then they will, he said, it's going to be, it's going to be like a death trap. Mm -hmm. You go in, you get your head blown out, and you'll be out of coaching. And he said, you got a great job at Redlands. And I said, yeah, you're right. I love Redlands. And that night, they're all driving back home to Riverside, and I'm to Redlands, and uh, I told Lewis, I said, you know, I think I'm going to turn that job down. I'm going to stay at Redlands. And that's what my plan was, stay at Redlands. But the, it was on a Thursday night, we went in the past me on Friday morning. I got up to call the president of Riverside, tell him I was going to stay at Redlands. And before I could even get, tell him, but they, they said, Jerry, congratulations. He said, I got the board of trustees to, um, uh, to okay your position, and, and uh, you got the job. He said, we want to have a press conference Monday morning, and, and it was too far gone. So I wound up there for the best thing ever happened. Mm -hmm. So I would have got to, if I would have stayed at Redlands. High school after I'd be teaching driver ed there. <laughs> so my kids could go to college. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have made any money. So it was a great school. What kind of success did you have at Riverside? Uh, uh, oh, I had great success. Mm -hmm. I was the winningest coach in junior, California junior college history. We won four straight state championships, three at Riverside and one at Pasadena. And no one's to this day is a lot more than two. And um, I went four in a row. And 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 so obviously the more you won, the more attractive you you became to other yeah. uh, institutions and that. So what was your next stop after Riverside? Well, I went to Pasadena, back to Pasadena, mm -hmm. my whole. That's when I started to hear about you, the legend of Tarkanian yeah. when you were at Pasadena. Well, I went to Pasadena, and um, we had won three straight at Riverside, and nobody won that, did that before. In our championship year, I had the greatest junior college team probably, probably two of the greatest junior college teams in California history. 
My last year there, we won the state championship. We went to the state tournament. It was in Bakersfield. We had the biggest role following of any junior college. And uh, the average spread in those three games was 43 points. Wow. We won the state championship game by 30 points. Mm. Uh, Who'd you uh, play in the state championship? Uh, state College of San Francisco. Uh -huh. Sid Phelan was their coach, great coach. We, it was just unbelievable. We, it was uh, 43 points was the average spread in three games. Did you have any big name uh, players that played for you at Pasadena, Jerry? Yeah, I had most of the guys that played for me the next year when I went to Riverside. I went to uh, Long Beach. Long Beach. Oh, so you took a lot of those guys oh, with yeah. you? Uh huh. I took the California Junior College All Star team with me. Wow. I basically had all the top players in California Junior College. I remember we went to. We played Oklahoma City that year. A Lemon was the coach. Yeah, great, great friend of both of us. And they were warming up, but we were warming up. And Abe comes up to me and, "What kind of team going to have, coach?" I thought we're going to be pretty good. I think Abe, but problem is, I said I got all junior college guys, and he puts his arm around me. He said, "Coach, he said you're going to have to learn to be patient with junior college kids. It's going to mm -hmm. take them a while." <laughs> We blew them out at his place. We beat him by about 20 some points. Mm -hmm. We're all junior college kids the next year. Abe was at the California Junior College Tournament recruiting. <laughs> Abe was a great guy. Uh, one of the all time uh, best guys to, to be around that. So, so Jerry, didn't you? Uh, then your, 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 the legend of Tarkanian continued to blossom in that. And the, the one thing that I always remember when you're at Long Beach State was you played that one two two zone, and 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 every time I talked to someone, uh, people would be uh, and you get to talk about Long Beach. They said, "Have have you seen that one two two zone that Tarkanian played?" And of course, you didn't have the coverage that television you had today. And so I'd say no, and people would say, "Oh, you got to see it. It's." <coughs> It's near impossible to get the ball inside, and it's tough to get outside shots. Tell us a little bit of, about your, your philosophy of defense with that 1-2-2 two, two at Long Beach, Jerry. Well, we were a man-to-man -man team all through high school. Mm -hmm. And I went to Long Beach, and I had Bob Rule, who was a great player at, uh, when I went to Riverside. Mm -hmm. Bob Rule was a great player. <coughs> For me, I thought he was the best junior college player in California history to this day. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bobby got four falls. We're playing the first round of the state tournament. And uh, I had to go to his zone to keep Bobby in the game. And we didn't work on his zone at all. And I diagrammed one while our guys came to the bench and it didn't work. And we, it would cost us the game. We lost my first year. We lost to Fresno State College. Mm -hmm. And then we, they beat us in overtime. Bobby Rule falls out of the game. So I put in a zone the next year that whenever Bobby Rule was, or any of my guys were in fall trouble, we'd go to the zone. Well, we were so good the next year, we were blowing everybody out again. And uh, I would play the zone, start the second half in the zone, because we were usually dead by a good margin at halftime. And, and my sister was, uh, he was a German teacher, and he was a very intelligent guy, and he's keeping record of everything. And after a few games, he says, Coach, you realize, he said, I don't know if you realize this, he said, we're more efficient in the zone than we are in the man to man. It was a zone that I put it, mm -hmm. I made it my own zone. Mm -hmm. I never write a copy out from anybody. And, uh, so we started playing it a little bit more and more, and it worked so well for us. And uh, the next, the one that I came came to Riverside, I mean to Long Beach State. And when I went to Long Beach State, we were going to play the zone, and we did play the zone for five years straight. Long Beach State we won a championship every year, and. Uh, we went to the one two two zone. I played the zone for eleven consecutive years. Wow. 
we won championship every year to win it. And uh, my, no, this is when I, I was in junior college when I played it, so five years straight, seven years in, uh, consecutive. And then when I went to Long Beach State, my first year I played man to man. And we went 20 and 8. And um, the next year I was figuring out playing his own again. And I had a, a seven foot red shirt from Oral Roberts, David Vaughn. Was his name. I remember him. I remember he David very vividly. And we were really excited about getting in. And uh, he's, we, he signed a pro contract in August. I'm in Flathead Lake, Montana, speaking in a clinic. It was really interesting. I went to this clinic and they took my family. We, that was our vacation. We drove up in a van and we didn't have to make any money or nothing like that, but we always had good family uh, vacations. And my son, Danny, was uh, got to be friends with John Elway. John Elway's dad was a football coach at, mm -hmm. Mon at Montana University. Yeah, I know his dad very well. Yeah. And uh, Elway was Danny's age. And it was really interesting. But anyways, uh, David Vaughn went pro on us in, in August. And I get a call from my assistant. And he said, Coach, you'll never believe this. He said, David Vaughn signed with Virginia Squires. I said, what? I was stunned. So I get my family together. We drive back, and I'm panicking all the way back. I, I got to get together. I don't know what we're going to do. We don't have, uh, we can't play the zone. I didn't have another big guy. I had one another big guy, Louis Brown. But I knew that. Louis Brown knew he was the only big guy we had. He'd hold us hostage. So I had to get out and play man to man. And I get back to Vegas and I get meeting with my coaches. And I, you know, like the year before we went twenty and eight. And I, I figured if I had another twenty and eight year, they'd be getting on my back a little bit. And uh, so I told my coach that we got to salvage this year because I. Signed some good kids, but uh, they were all six 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 five guys. Didn't have a big man among them. And I said, we got to play man to man. We got to pick up. At, uh, I was a Pete Rule disciple, anyways. So we had pick up at half court. We're gonna pressure the ball, force a ball in the middle, and everything. And so that's what we we did the next year. I didn't think we were gonna be very good. In fact. We were in our league, in our league, uh, we were finished to pick about fourth or fifth in our league. Uh, we didn't get a vote at all in, uh, in national polls or anything. And uh, we, we won the league. We had a great year. We, we uh, went like a 23 and three or something like that. We had a great year playing. Man to man, we picked up at half court, pressured the ball. We went to the tournament, we won our first tournament game, beat San Diego State. Next round, we went, we played Montana in Portland, and UCLA was, 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 and UCLA played, UCLA played Montana first. And uh, we played Arizona State. Arizona State beat us by one point. Beat us by one point, and we were devastated after the loss. And I'll never forget that watching Arizona State, I, uh, watching uh, Montana play in UCLA in the next game. I didn't know who Jed Eco was. I never, I didn't know anything about Jed. Mm -hmm. I'm watching him play, and I was so amazed. He's, I thought he was totally out coaching the wisdom. Mm -hmm. 
And I said, if I look down, where's this guy? <laughs> they were back door in UCLA, and, and they had a bunch of cowboys up in the stands, and cowboys are going nuts up there. And mm. They 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 should have won that game. We're about two minutes to go, and the referees took over. Mm. And here we call it against them. And UCLA pulls it out in the last second. But I, I wanted to get to meet Jenny Code after that. But in those days, you had to play a, 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 a preliminary game. game. You had to play a preliminary game. So we we, we played Montana in a pre, uh, preliminary game. We won that game. And uh, but I I was so impressed with Jenny Code. Jerry, what was your highest ranking team at Long Beach? And I didn't realize it until I went to Lutzi's house. After I got out of coaching, I had a speaking engagement in, I think it was Virginia Beach. And Lois went with it because she liked uh, Lutzi's wife. And we, Lutzi came with my speech and afterwards took us over to his house. And we stayed there about three, four days with him. Had a great time. And, um, uh, and Lutzi has a room in his house, in his apartment. And in the room he had, you know, you know all their team pictures. Yeah, yeah and, and he's got the rankings yeah, up there. Yeah, right. And uh, they were ranked number three and number four in the country, I think. And number three was Long Beach State. Wow. I said, God, can you believe this? We were number three in the country. That was, that was like my third year of Long Beach. Mm -hmm. But then I was stunned. I looked at that and I, I said, God, look, I didn't even realize we were right we that high. Mm -hmm. and, and from Long Beach, Jerry, what was your next stop? UNLV. UNLV. And uh, I, I remember when you got that job, uh, uh, you called me, I was at Washington State, and, and of course you and I had a friendship, and you said, hey, George, I need you to do me a favor, and I said, what? You said, I told these people I'd get some pet, tough teams on the schedule, and get. So we're, I think we're only eight teams still in the league, then the Pac-8, and you said, I, uh, I told them I'd get a couple Pac-8 teams, so would you play me? And I said, sure, and you, you said, I need you to come play me first at our place, and I'll return the game, so I said yes, and I look back on on where the program was then and where you took it. It, it was just a, an extraordinary ride and a, a, of accomplishments and what you did at UNLV. No, it, it really was. But I was I was surprised that we were as good as we were at Long Beach State because we didn't have anything going for us in Long Beach. We had no money. When I say that, I say this over and over again. We had to be the poorest school in the history of the NC2A to get in the playoffs. We had no money. We didn't even have a full-time secretary. We had one secretary for all the department. We had one office that our basketball staff had, and we had three coaches in that office, me and two my two assistants. And we didn't have a full-time secretary. We had no money at all. And... Um, it was amazing, and I, had, my top assistant was a guy that we were hardly paying. He he was, he, he was going to school on the GI Bill. He was got out of the service and came to Long uh, to Riverside, played for me. He was a substitute for me. What a great player! But he didn't need anybody. He 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 was a real good English major. I remember he was the uh, honor student in English and. He'd write letters and recruiting, but he was a, just constantly recruiting. And we wound up, what, what turned our program around is we got Ed Rattle. Mm -hmm. And he legitimized our program. Was he an Ohio kid? Yeah, a wild kid. Mm -hmm. he, well, what, what, what happened is, we, when I went to Long Beach State, we were recruiting California guys, basically. Because the out of state kid cost us one and two thirds scholarship because out of state tuition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We couldn't afford one of those. Uh, we were recruiting Bruce Clark. He was a top high school player in Southern California. He went to Edison, not Edison, 
uh, Jefferson High School. And we we started out him when he was at Southport High School. He'd come to our game, we'd introduce him, and he wound up being the LA City Player of the Year. Mm -hmm. the, we, uh, we thought we definitely were going to get him. And uh, he would come to all our games, and he, he really liked us, and he didn't like Boyd at all. And he, he told us how much he didn't like Boyd. And of course, he said he didn't like UCLA, and that was because he didn't speak to him. But they had a CIF City All Star game, and we took him to the game, and he had like 31 points, and he played great, he got player of the game. And Denny Crum was their assistant. Denny Crum was their UCLA assistant. Yeah, and Denny Crum took had Wooden at the game, and he had Wooden after the game go over and meet the kid, talk to the kid. So the kid tells us we're even. I said, "You still are even? How the hell can we be even? After I've been recruiting you for three years." Mm -hmm. They said, "Wooden says hello, and now we're even." <laughs> it was it was really ridiculous. And anyway, his mother was, she she felt like I was right. And she kind of made him feel like I was right. So he says he's going to come to Long Beach State. It was us, the amazing thing, it was us, Arizona State, um, UCLA, and USF that was recruiting him. Mm -hmm. And USF was good in those days. And no one could understand how Long Beach got in the picture. Oh! <laughs>